Hello everybody, thank you for tuning in to the uh, We'll Fix It channel today. Uh, the We'll Fix It team, we call it that because uh, you as viewers and people who connect with me on this channel are like a team. What I'm holding in my hand here is, a, is an old, I guess by now it would be called a vintage Cobra 2000 bass radio. And it was brought to me by a man who was had the, had the radio on and he was outside on his mobile the large, big mobile radio, and it was keying up. And then after that, he came back inside and realized his radio was on, and it was receiving that large signal as he was really close to his antenna. And it, uh, it but what's weird is it actually has received. You can actually listen and hear chant, hear people talk, but there's no output. No, no output. You know, on my meters, where I show and you kind of, you know, RF. Which would be like 10 watts, whatever. No, it doesn't do anything. It doesn't, doesn't move the meters. It, it switches over to, to on air, like you're keying up, but there's no output. And I do know that the final, or the, 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 the power output transistors are connected in, in many ways. So they do a lot. And uh, I said, let, the easiest thing to do on these is to check that first, especially when there's no output. Even though it was in receive mode and it was picking up, it just... You know, it should have blew out the receive, you figured. But that's actually working. Um, I've, I've done the liberty of already kind of testing a few things, but I figured I would like to show you guys in a video that might help you. And I want it to be not a very long video for people that are busy. But sometimes I just can't help it because, you know, I like to explain things. And by the way, I'm not a certified technician, just a, uh, just a man trying to survive out here and keep stuff going for locals the best I can. I'm, I was never taught you know, went to any kind of electrical school or anything. And so I want to show you how I would test these. Uh, th th there's It's kind of hard to see the pins on this. But uh, sorry about moving the camera a lot. It gets kind of pixelated, but what we have, I have these soldered and lifted off the board. This is the 1969 final. And one of those terminals is like way up here. Uh, let me get a little bit more light on this. Maybe that would help. So you can kind of see what I'm doing here. And this is, I mean, and this, this procedure works. I've got a transistor tester. But I wanted to just throw these on circuit and just see what it was do. So let's see if that helps us. Yeah, you can see those pins a little bit better. All right. Okay, I'm gonna turn down this radio. We're listening to the lower side band. There's some lightning striking out in the back, and so kind of gives you a little bit of a mood. I like to I like to listen to static. I do. I'll get this meter down so you can see it. I've got the meter down, and I've got it set in my diode setting. And my, this is a trusty, I love this old meter. It's an old 90s model or late, late, late 80s Fluke FM27 meter. And we'll just check our leads. Okay, and you can see I kind of pulled back a little bit. Because it's, uh, let's see if I can, I want to keep this in shot though. So I'm going to do my best to try to do that. Okay, you can see my, my leads are kind of, my camera doesn't focus that well, but. My leads are over here, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go across the uh, first two. Let's see if you can see this here. I don't have anything, no, no, there's nothing there. Even if I switch leads, there's nothing there. Nothing there. And same thing over here. Oh, I touched, I touched the two together. So but if I do that, there's nothing there. Okay, you can. So this thing is completely open. That's not good. I've got another final uh, transistor that's a little ways up. And uh, I'm, I'm trying my best to get this in video as possible. But it does actually, one side does work, but the other side's open. I have a, that set, 0 0.658 is kind of normal for, for like diodes and a transistor as it goes through its, uh, you know, its, its rectification or uh, its, you know, its, its ability to, to polarize or keep voltage from going away. Another, see, it's, it's closed there. Got an open circuit, but we have a little bit of resistance, which is normal. But we don't have anything on this side, and we should. And I'm going to show you on a working 1969 final what that would actually look like. Uh, 
uh, let's see here. I'm just going to throw this one right here on the meter so you can see it. And I'll, I'll show you how that works. This is, uh, this is 1969. No, that's, well, 2166, same thing. Or that, that, that's actually for sideband. But here's the 1969 final, which is what these things, you, you know, would take. And I'm going to try to, uh, nothing there. You can see I've got something going there. And it's, like I said, a little hard to see. You can see I've got something there. But uh, that's what you want. That's the diode and circuit working in this transistor. The gate, they would call that. So we know that that 1969 final is bad. And so we're gonna check this 2166, which this has a, has a 1306 final. And for the sideband, which I think you can use a 2166 in place of it, we're gonna try it. I know that I'm covering my meter up, but you don't see anything there. You can see we've got something there on that side. We've got the same thing here. So that's, and it's not, it doesn't go through that way. So we can see the actual diode and it's, and, it's, and it's working. So I know I've got those two components are bad. Um, I did take time and sort of just check diodes on the board. I even took a few of them out of circuit that were in that area of the receive. And they actually checked out good. There's, um, I'll flip the radio over and try to get it in shot here because we're going to take these out. And we're going to replace them with what I have there. And 1969 finals are actually getting kind of hard to get. Uh, there's a lot of imitation ones. I've got some that are fake and they're no good. Anytime you get a, 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 a like a component like that off of eBay or whatever, you want to check it because they they're, there's a good chance they're they're not real, especially if it's you know they claim they're brand new whatever. Nobody's making them anymore. So they're going to be new old stock or something, you know. Um, probably can't see. Uh, I'm trying not to make the video too long, but I'm going to show you a little something about this radio that a lot of people do. Let me get the, let me ease the camera up and try to get over the board. Maybe I can. Yeah, I kind of can. Let's zoom in a little bit. All right. All right, so um, I'm gonna use a pointer so I don't get my big old stupid hands in the way, but right here, this diode is in line with the resistor that you would see that's going in back to the board. You clip that resistor, and it's, if I move the camera to death, you're gonna be mad at me, So, but I'm just trying to show you guys. But this actually makes it do a lot more power. It gives you a lot more power to uh, do that. Okay, you can kind of see it there in this image. That's a neat CB trick. The uh, the VR for the power output's been removed. It would have been it would have been right here. You can see this little spot, and it's been moved and put remotely at the at the front of the radiator, radio the radio on the tone knob, so that you can control the variable dead key. But by placing this diode in line with that resistor that normally would have went right here, just clip that in two. That gives you, that'll make it swing a, a little bit more power instead of clipping out at five watts. It'll actually go on into the, around the 10 or 12 watt range. And sometimes you get these things to swing 15 watts. That's a lot. They're not designed to do a lot of power, but they do a lot of bird watts. So let me uh, move the camera back up and see if I can get back in shot here to the, to the finals. But I've got to take both of those out right there. I'm gonna take these out, and I'll probably cut the camera because I don't need to make it forever, but I'm gonna take these two out and replace them. And then I'll solder them in, and then we'll just test it to see. Maybe this thing will come back to life. That would be a really easy, simple fix. By the way, these are, um, these things are, are reflective, they're, they're sensitive to heat, and they're supposed to, to sense the, the heat sink. If this thing gets hot, it's supposed to cut the power back on the radio so you don't blow these finals out. <clears throat> okay, so let me stop the camera and switch those out. I'll do a little bit. You can watch me fumble the screwdriver. Um, and a little something about 
these, what I, that there, a little detail about these, there's an insulator that goes to the back of this transistor to, to isolate this transistor because the back of this thing is actually part of the base. And you and you don't want that base to make make a ground uh, onto this heat sink because it'll short. So I've got a I've got a special washer that's 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 dent designed to center this screw to keep it from touching this uh, actual transistor. And I've got an insulator that's like this spacer right there. <laughs> and uh, basically, so now what I want to do, what I'll do is I'm not going to snug, I'm not going to tighten it all the way because I'm going to center that up a little bit when I flip it over, but I've already got both of those desoldered. So let me go ahead and get the other one switched out. But that's it's a little bit of something you need to know about these and why you see that funny spacer on these screws. All right. So I've got the board flipped back over and careful tightening those little plastic washers down. They're kind of fragile. I didn't, I didn't break anything, but I came close. Like I say, all you super fine-tuned technicians out there i'm not a technician i'm just a <laughs> i'm a golden screwdriver deluxe how about that i know when to quit uh so uh, i've already got the soldered iron heated up i'll move some of this i've already cleaned that with my prep pen i've got something i want to just oh let's see here Show you guys, bump the camera. Don't get to red. This thing right here, I'm gonna show you guys, is a, uh, it's a, called a prep pin. It looks like a pin, but it's actually at the tip of it. It's got fiberglass insert, and it works really good for cleaning solder pads and getting rid of uh, flux between these uh, solder joints. And you can get them in your Amazon, your arts and crafts department. You can look for that because they use it for all kinds of stuff. So it's called a prep pin in case you're looking for that. But this I use a lot to get to get in there and clean uh, a lot of flux that gets in between things. And a trusty toothbrush to dust it off. And it's fiberglass, so be careful with it. Get in you. So I've got some, a piece of solder right here. And I have a solder and iron. But let me get, get these get these all straightened up and ready to be put on the board. And hopefully this thing comes to life. Let's see here. We're gonna. My wife is sitting in behind me, so it's a little weird talking to myself. She's laughing at me. She's touching my butt. <laughs> All right, here we go. I need to be careful with this because just lead over a little bit. It's not too bad. Yeah, I like that right there. All right. There. Okay. We'll try not to bump the camera again. And we're still lined up pretty good. Yes, that'll work really good. Okay, we're still lined up. Let's see here. Well, um... These have already been installed, so they're already kind of tinned up. Let me get this up really good here. I have a vacuum pump desoldering tool, so I use that to get the solder off the board. And you can pick those up pretty reasonable from Amazon, and they're really handy. And I've already heated those two leads up, so I'm going to move on to the next transistor or final, whatever you want to call it, because I don't want to overheat that final with putting a bunch of heat we'll give it time to cool off a little bit we'll go to this one over here and i'll move back on that other one because it's had time to sort of dissipate some of that heat i like a, a really hot soldering iron because it will uh, uh, you know a, a cold uh, 
there's a give and a take. If you've got a really hot soldering iron, you'll heat the point that you want soldered up really fast. And if you're quick at it, you'll get your solder in and not transfer too much heat. But if you've got to sit there and hold something for a long time to get it to heat up, then it uh, kind of turns into a mess because it soaks a lot of heat in. All right. I need to, that's doable, not bad. All right, let's see, let me put this up out of the way, wipe it off here. There we go. Yeah, it looks good, okay. Take my little tool and just kind of go in between that a little bit. A good solder will have a flux that's not conductive, but over time it can get conductive. And in a real sensitive circuit, that could be a problem. I'll clean this a little bit. This is the toothbrush I use to brush my teeth at night, but don't tell anybody. All right. And this thing's been into before. Somebody else has already been down that road. Now, the next test is to flip it back over and then we're gonna plug it in and we're gonna see if it's gonna work. So, let's see what happens. So, my sort of redneck test center, I'm gonna turn it on. I gotta plug in my speaker too. But uh, I've got a, a little, just a, you know, I've got a set of bird meters there, but we're not doing nothing crazy. So we just did it on 20 watt scale. And I just, a little bubble antenna just stuck over there. <laughs> Your technicians will be so, so angry at me. Like, how dare you not be using a dummy load? I know. Uh, let me get this set up where you can see it on the meter. I'm going to plug in my speaker. Let's see here. There we go. Move that out of the way so we can actually see it work. Hopefully it does. We'll see. You can hear a little bit of static too. Uh, not static. All right, do we have power? Uh oh. Yes, it's alive. <laughs> yes. Audio. That is all right. Yes, yes, yes. We're working. And uh, what kind of power are we doing here? That's a 10 watt scale. So we're looking at the very bottom. Audio. That's about what it did before. Yep, yep, yep. Let's see. Uh, let's check our variable power. Yep, I'm turning my variable power knob. Audio. Yeah, that's working. Good deal. So we saved it. Let's see if this thing will do anything in sideband. Audio. All right, so apparently the 2166 will go in place at 1306. Yes, and my meters are working on the front too. That's good stuff. You can see it here. Audio, hello, audio. That's what we want. So that was a that's a good, 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 good day. Good day on on the radio to, because it was a DOA, no no nothing going on there. So I want to thank everybody for watching the Wheel Fix It team. And if you ever run into an issue where something's, you know, where it's doing that, you'll know. But basically, like I said earlier, it was there was a lot of power that was ran backwards into this thing. <laughs> so it, instead, you would think it would knock out the receipt, but it knocked out the finals. And you've seen how I tested them. So hope that helps. And uh, all you technicians out there, you can, you can leave me hate comments. I, I appreciate it. All right, take it easy, guys, and I am out.